Java, C, and C++ are popular coding languages that have been used for decades. With Chrome OS, you can develop applications using these languages. This video will show you how. To demonstrate the capabilities of coding on Chrome OS, I previously created a video on how to set up environments for C Sharp and Python. Since then, I've had viewers ask me about setting up Java, so I decided to create this video to show you how to set up a Java environment and also an environment for C and C++ coding. So let's get to it. Let's start with setting up Java and also assume that we have a fresh install of Linux on Chrome OS. If you don't have it installed, check out my video on how to install it. So open up a terminal window like I have here. It's good practice to get all the latest package information from the installed sources. Do this by typing sudo at get update. When that's done, Upgrade any currently installed packages to their latest version by typing sudo app get upgrade. After that's done, we can start setting up the Java environment. Let's start by installing the Java development kit. Type sudo app get install space open jdk 8 jdk. This will begin the install. After it's done, Let's confirm and see if Java is installed. Type Java space dash version. You should see some Java information confirming that the install worked. We now want to install Visual Studio Code. Head over to code.visualstudio.com and click on the button for the .deb download. A download will begin as you can see here at the bottom right. When it's done downloading, Open up the Files app and go to the Downloads folder. On the downloaded file, right-click it, and then click Install with Linux Beta. A new pop-up will appear. Wait until you see some information show up about the package you are installing. Then click on Install. The installation progress will be shown to the bottom right. There, you will also be notified when the installation is done. Now open the App Launcher and you will see a Visual Studio Code icon. Click on it. So we have Visual Studio Code installed. Now let's install the necessary Java extension for it. Click on View. Then click on Extensions. In the search box, type Java Extension Pack. On the results, click Install on the Java Extension Pack with Microsoft as the publisher. This will actually install several extensions that will help you code in Java. When everything is done installing, you can now start coding in Java. Let's create a folder where our Java project will be saving. Click File, Open Folder. Here, I'm going to make sure I'm in my home folder. To create a new folder, I'll click on the New Folder icon and name it Hello World. Click Create. I'm automatically put inside the Hello World folder, so I'll now click on OK. Now I'll create a new file and name it Hello World.java. The file automatically opens, so now I'll type out a simple Hello World program. I'm done. To run the program, right-click on anywhere on the code window and then click on Run. A terminal window will appear at the bottom with the results of the code. We've now confirmed Java development is working. Now, let's set up C and C++ development. Here, I'm also going to assume this is a fresh install of Linux. So let's update the current packages and sources by typing sudo apt get update and sudo apt get upgrade. Next, we will install the Java development kit by typing sudo apt get install openjdk-8-jdk. Dash dash when that's installed, we want to install the C and C++ development packages. So type sudo apt get install build dash essential space gdb. Now I'm ready to install the IDE we are going to use for development. I'm going to be using NetBeans. I prefer coding in Visual Studio Code, but I had issues setting up C in it. NetBeans was much more straightforward to set up. 
NetBeast can also be used for Java development, so you can also use it for that instead of Visual Studio Code. I'll go to netbeans.org so we can download it from there. When you're on the website, click on the download button here. Go to the latest version and click on download button. In this window, we want to click on the Linux installer. Now, here we can choose the server where we want to download the installer from. Any of them will do. Since this installer is actually a script I need to run from the terminal, I'm going to select Linux files as the location I want to download the file to. When the file is downloaded, I'll open up a terminal. I downloaded the file to the root of my home folder, so if I list this contents, you can see the file listed here. Currently, we cannot run the file because it is not executable. To set it to be executable, I will type chmod plus x and the file name. Now the file can be executed. And to execute it, type dot forward slash and the file name. Now an installer window will show up. Click next here. Accept the license agreement and click next. Here, I get to choose where the application will be installed and the location of my Java development kit. The defaults will work just fine. Leave everything as is on this window also and click install. You will start seeing the install progress. Once it's done, click finish. The program will now appear on your app launcher. Run it from there. So here we have NetBeans open. As is, you can't use C or C++. You will have to install a plugin to get that working. And to do that, click on Tools, Plugins. On the window that comes up, click on the Settings tab. Here, check off NetBeans 8.2 Plugin Portal. Now click on the Available Plugins tab. Then click the Check for Newest button. Wait until it's done checking for new plugins. Now, if you see here, there is a C slash C++ line that shows up. Click on the checkbox next to it, then click Install. Here, click Next. Accept the license agreement by clicking on the checkbox, then click Install. On this window, just click on Continue. And I'm done. Click on Finish to close this window. And let's close the plugins windows also. Now I'm ready to write and run some code. I'm going to create a new project by clicking on File, New Project, C slash C++, C slash C++ Application. Then click Next. I'm going to name this project Hello World and I'll leave the rest as is. Click Finish. Now let's open up the Source Files folder and then double click on main.cpp. I'll write out a quick Hello World program. Now I'm done writing the code and to run it, I just click on this play button up here and you can see the results at the bottom. And there you go, a C and C++ development environment on a Chromebook. So this video is another example on just how useful Chrome OS can be to developers. The great thing is, Linux on Chrome OS is still in beta, so it will only get better. There are a lot of misconceptions out there on Chromebooks, with people saying that they are useless and are just glorified web browsers. While this may have been true when they were first introduced, they have come a long way since then. Check out my other Chromebook videos to see just how productive they can be. So if you found this video helpful, please give it a like. And if you want to see more content like this, subscribe to my channel. Thank you, and I'll speak to you next time.